Today I'm going to show a demo of doing pagination in Vault. To do this, I've set up a demo app that takes articles from different RSS feeds and displays them. So here we'd start with store and then each article, and it displays the link and the title. And uh, here's what the end result is going to look like, just to give you an idea. But to start with, we're going to import our articles from our, some RSS feeds. So here I have a list of RSS feeds. And then this code just loops through each of those, uh, parses the, the feed, and then inserts an article with the title and the link. And outside of controllers at the moment, you have to use this, this page global to access things like store and, and page and uh, local store and things like that. That's going to change in the future, but at the moment that's kind of the way you do it. So what I can do is uh, Vault comes with a runner, similar to Rails runner if you're familiar with that. Um, so you can see here, here's we can see all the different commands and uh, we can basically say Vault runner and give it the path to a file. So in this case I'm going to run my import file and <clears throat> It's going to go ahead and download all these URLs, parse them, and then insert them. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my server. Go ahead and restart this. And then you're going to see that it's got all of these articles listed. What would be nice is to paginate these. To go ahead and start with, we're going to replace accessing stored dot articles directly with calling the paged articles collection on our controller. So if we go into here, we can go ahead and create a method called paged articles. Uh, st we can start with store dot articles. And this returns a cursor that we could, you know, query, which returns another cursor that we could skip on, all sorts of things. So we're just going to go ahead and use all of them, and then we're going to skip on them. To skip, we're going to take we're going to say we want the uh, start offset. And then we're going to limit by the per page number. So let's just go ahead and take per page. And at the moment, we're just going to hard code this in. And then let's do start offset. We want to store the page number in the in the URL. So um, so the way we do that is we use the params collection uh, and we say params underscore page, uh, it, grab that if it exists. If it doesn't, we want to return one as the page. Uh, to make things pretty, Vault uh, defaults to using one based indexing for pages. There's also a component that you can get that I've built that lets you uh, really easily show the pages, uh, show the pagination. So one thing to keep in mind with params is that they return as strings. So uh, we'll go ahead and convert this to an integer. Uh, so we'll say grab the page attribute or one, convert it to an integer, and then we're going to multiply it by the per page number. Okay, so we can go ahead and hit save here. And this is going to reload and we're going to see 10 pages. We could, you know, increase this to 15, uh, but we'll just leave it. <coughs> we'll leave it at 10 for the moment. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is is include, um, let me show you this. Uh, so here's Vault Pagination, uh, paging component for Vault apps. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. We can just go into our gem file, uh, add Vault Pagination, go ahead and bundle, and then restart our server. And then what we're going to do is include in our dependencies for this component, for the main component, we're going to include pagination. And then the last thing to do that's uh, fairly easy is uh, we can just include uh, the pagination tag that it gives us. And then the only required attribute is the total number of um, whatever we're working with. So here it's articles. Um, so here we can drop that in. It defaults. It's got a bunch of good defaults. Uh, and here you can see we now have working pagination. <coughs> and again, 
the the pagination um, component really is only for displaying the pagination. Um, it goes ahead and assumes some things, so we can go ahead and fill some of these things in. So we could say per page, uh, you know, call the per page method in the controller. Um, and so now, if we were to change this to 15, um, you can see it recomputes the total number of pages correctly. Um, it'll also take things like uh, we could say how big the window is. Um, so the window is kind of when you're in the middle here, how many how many things are in here. Um, so we could say two, and then it'll drop down one. Um, so the interesting thing with the way uh, params works in Vault, uh, sorry, the default is five, actually. Um, so the interesting thing with the way params works in Vault is that um, these... Uh, this works both ways. So params gets, when, when everything starts, uh, params is assigned from the URL. And when the params changes, it updates the URL. So here we could say if we went to page eight, um, you know, things automatically work. Uh, again, the component kind of gives you kind of a nice standard paging out of the box. One thing that's interesting with the way Volt handles uh, this, this example is that the paged articles method uh, is returning a different cursor at each time as I change the params page attribute since that's all dependent. And then the, the views are automatically updating that. So each time I click a new page, it's going to the back end and requesting the data. Um, so it's, but what's interesting is the front end is kind of updating everything automatically based on the dependency graph. So there's no need to kind of manually handle all that. Uh, and then Vault is smart about kind of keeping only the things it needs in memory at any given time. So it's kind of a nice, uh, simple way to do pagination and kind of have some control over it, but also not needing to write a lot of code. Um, and front-end pagination, uh, if you've ever done it before, can be can be a lot of code. And I think the way uh, Vault ends up doing it makes it really simple, easy to understand, and easy to use. One other thing I'd like to show, I think this is a good example, uh, is the way that um, component inheritance wor it works in Vault. Um, so here, if we go into the Vault pagination control, uh, we can go into app slash pagination, look at views slash main again. So here we see that within the Vault pagination component, there's a folder in app called pagination views main. So if we went ahead and went over here in our, in our current app, uh, in our demo app, and set up a pagination folder, uh, and then a views, and then main, and then did an index.html file. <clears throat> um, what we can do is we can take the code from in here, copy this in, and then uh, let's just let me just add. Something to differentiate. Um, let's see, and then we may have to restart the server currently. That's going to get fixed. We're actually working on that now, uh, and you can see we get um, where we're actually using this template instead of the the one that came with the gym. And so the nice thing, obviously, with that is we can really easily say say we wanted to change. Uh, the dot dot dots, um, you know, something like that. Uh, we can totally rewrite this, and we're still using the same controller. Um, we could go ahead and add in, you know, copy in controllers, uh, anything, and um, this one will get the priority. So that's kind of a nice, easy way um, to customize things. In the future, we're working on actually making it so you can inherit, uh, sort of do more inheritance uh, with views so that you could um, take part sections of views, for example, and only replace certain parts and things like that, um, and then have it where you can sort of have another controller um, and give it a new name but keep, you know, rely on parts of the existing um, component. Uh, anyway, so that's pagination. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Thanks.